What's up y'all? Today in this video I'm going to show y'all how to fish one of the most versatile inshore saltwater lures and that is a jig. So a jig might be the very first lure that you use to catch your first fish. It's not only is it one of the most versatile, it's also one of the most uh, simple and also effective lures that you will always use to catch inshore saltwater fish. So in this video, you guys, I'm gonna show y'all everything that you need to know, how to fish a jig, how to choose the right jig heads, um, how to choose the right soft plastics to go with your jig, the right technique, everything that you need to know on how to catch fish with, in my opinion, the most effective inshore saltwater fishing lure right here in a jig is going down right here in this video. So you guys stay tuned. I'm gonna show y'all how to fish this lure right here. All right, y'all, so the first thing that we wanna talk about with jig heads is just like how to choose the right jig head. And here I have, I'm gonna show y'all all the jig heads that I have in my tackle box. And I do like to keep things relatively simple. So these are my jig heads right here, kind of unorganized. So I actually laid them out right here. I like to use a combination of these gotcha jig heads right here. So we have the 1 8 ounce, and the 1 8 ounce is perfect when I'm fishing like, um, you know, anything like two feet of water, three foot of water, uh, fishing over grass, uh, fishing over like oyster bars or whatever. It pairs perfectly with a smaller lure like this. This is the Berkeley Gulp Swimming Mullet. And uh, this right here when I'm wade fishing is absolutely ideal. So I love this jig head right here. Uh, I've got a quarter ounce jig head quarter ounce this right here is probably the most used jig head that I have in my arsenal um, I get a lot of questions about like what color jig heads do I have any preference about color if I had to say it would either be white or I really like this red color right here if I'm fishing like this all white soft plastic right here this Berkeley gulp uh, diesel minnow then I'll pair it up with this red right here just for a little bit of contrast so contrast is really important when you're thinking about colors so i do like to fish I, I really don't always like to fish white on white i'll typically do white with red so i get a lot of questions about colors of jig heads and primarily my favorites are white or red um, another jig head that i really like to use is these uh like trout eyes and actually striper eyes so these are kind of newer right here just saw these in my tackle shop and these are three quarter ounce uh, jig heads, a little larger. So these are really popular. This is the trout eye jig head. As you can see, the shank, at least on this one, is much shorter than it is on the gotchas. This is really important when you're choosing your jig head and you're pairing it up with your lure. So if I'm fishing a smaller profile lure, then I'm gonna fish a smaller jig head like this one right here would be the ideal setup right here for it, selecting the proper jig head with my soft plastic. If I'm fishing, say for instance, a jerk shad, then I want a longer shank. So this hook right here has a longer shank. As you can see, it's taller than this hook right here. It's much more stout. So if I had this one, then the hook is only coming out to the top like 25% of the lure as opposed to the longer shank. You know, this one's coming out you know, kind of right through the middle of the lure. So you're not gonna get as much what we like to call short strikes. So, so you wanna make sure that everything lines up, that there's not, that your bait isn't all wonky. It's not like this, like that right there is definitely not what you want right there. So when you're rigging up your jig head, make sure that you are pushing it all the way to the top. And if anybody has any tips on Z-Man, and uh, easily rigging up Z-Man, then feel free to share those because these Z-Man can get, you know, kind of funny putting them on your jigs because that Elastec, you know, it's so stretchy. So sometimes it's kind of tough putting them on like thicker jig heads like this one right here. So right here, this is a half ounce jig head. This is what we want right here. As you can see, everything's flush. We don't want any gaps like that right there. Just something that small right there makes all the difference when you're fishing. So the fish is definitely not gonna eat that as much as it would right here. You want everything to look as natural as possible. This is my go-to flounder rig right here. So it's a 3 8 ounce jig head, and then I've got Berkeley Gulp Swimming Mullet. The action that we're going for is this just to be bouncing on the bottom. 
just like that. So that's the action that we're going for. Um, flounder, redfish, trout, snook, all of our inshore game fish, you can catch them on a jig head. I do really like these trout eyes and these striper eyes. I think that looks very natural. So um, definitely can't beat that. So let's say I'm going out, uh, Christine and I are going out on the boat and we're just gonna go fishing some back creeks. I'm gonna be taking all I need is a quarter ounce jig head and a one eighth ounce jig head. That's it. So if we're fishing in creeks, water depths from 10 foot, two feet, you know, and, and more shallower than that, anything up to 10 feet, then I'm either fishing a one eighth ounce jig head or a quarter ounce jig head. These are typically gonna be when I'm fishing for trout and redfish. When I'm fishing for flounder, because I wanna be fishing on the bottom, just on the bottom, or I'm fishing in depths of like five feet to 15 feet, then I'm gonna be fishing a 3 8 ounce jig head. I like to always have a 3 8 ounce jig head with a quarter ounce jig head because a 3 8 ounce jig head, sometimes you're gonna be getting hung up on the bottom, getting hung up even when I'm fishing near jetties, around jetties. If I'm getting hung up too much with a 3 8 ounce jig head, then I'm gonna scale it back to a quarter ounce. So these two, when I'm fishing water depths of about five to 15 feet is what I'm gonna be using right here. Um, if I am going striper fishing and we're gonna be fishing water depths 10 foot uh, up to 30 to 40 feet, then I'm gonna be fishing larger profile baits because striper will always hit a larger profile lure. So I'm gonna be using these right here. This is a three quarter ounce jig head, a half ounce jig head, and then I'm also going to have a 3 8 ounce jig head. Um, so these right here are gonna be the jig heads that I'm gonna be using for striper fishing, bridge fishing. Uh, if I'm say if I'm snook fishing as well and I'm fishing like near a pass or over an inlet um, with heavy current, then these are the jig heads that I'm gonna be using as well because these will uh, hold better in heavy, heavy current. So if I'm snook fishing near a bridge, then I'm gonna be using these as well. These heavier jig heads, a little bit larger profiled baits. Uh, so if I'm fishing in Stewart, Florida, and I'm fishing for larger snook on those bridges, then that's what I'm gonna be using right here. Something like that, or a half ounce jig head. So redfish, same thing. Um, I like to go between the trout eye and the gotchas. When I'm flounder fishing, I'm not gonna use this right here. That's just my opinion. I'm not gonna use these shorter shank uh, hooks. When I'm when I'm flounder fishing, I want to use a longer shank hook because I'm the flounder. Sometimes you're going to short strike it a lot. Redfish, you're not going to have as much of a problem with short strikes just because the way that redfish and even snook and striper hit your lure, you don't get a lot of short strikes. They just suck it in. Trout and flounder, you are going to get a little bit, a lot more like short strikes flounder because they're sometimes going to go after the tail and trout will actually sometimes they will come to a complete stop before they ambush your lure so that's just some a uh, little bit more technical information but that right there that's how i choose my jig heads and hopefully that helps you all out choose your proper jig head and pairing it up with the bait that you're fishing with so hopefully that helps let's go to the beach and i'm gonna show you all the right technique how to work these jig heads all right y'all so now i'm going to show you all how to properly fish a jig the right technique so I've got my GoPro on, so I'm gonna show y'all a combination of different views from the big camera and then also on my GoPro, some, some uh, first person angle. Um, so let's go ahead and let's just start talking about the overall technique of how to fish a jig. So the most common way to fish a jig is working it, just bouncing it on the bottom. You can do this all times of the year in all different fisheries, whether you're in Florida or up in Maryland or Delaware catching striped bass or you're catching snook down in Florida. You want to keep this lure, the objective of a jig and why it's so effective, again, is because it's right in the strike zone. So a common mistake that people make when they fish a jig is they make their hops way too abrupt like this. So their hops, when they're hopping it off the bottom, when you, your rod is seven feet long. So as y'all can see right here, so when I move my rod from here up to right here, that's close to four to five feet that my rod tip was right down here about almost right at my shoulders to right here about 
I don't know, nine feet tall, okay? That's about four feet that my rod. So when you guys are jigging, you do not need to do these crazy jigs like this. So when my jig is right there and you move your rod tip, this is a common mistake that people make. Their rod tip is pointed right here. And then when they jig, they jig up too much like that. See how much that jig moved? So the proper way that you want to fish a jig is not taking your rod from here to all the way up. It's small bounces, just like this. Very small. Just like that. We're just bouncing our lure along the bottom. Just like that, small hops. So when I'm fishing, so I'll cast it out. And with the jig, you always wanna have contact with the bottom. Um, 90% of the time, that's what I'm doing, is I'm bouncing my jig on the bottom. So you want to have contact with the bottom, but you don't want to have too much slack in your line. If you have too much slack in your line, then you're not able to drive that hook into the fish's mouth and, you know, keep that fish hooked. So you don't want to have too much slack in your line, but you do want to have contact with the bottom. So you want your, uh, so you want your jig to be on the bottom and it's just small jigs of the rod, just like this. And then what you're doing as you're jigging it off of the bottom, you're reeling up the slack. And that right there is more or less, that's the fundamental action that you want to give a jig right there. I typically go with like a pop, let it hit on the bottom and then like a pop, pop. Most important is that they are just small jigs, just like this. The other ways that you can work a jig is you can swim it. Again, when you're fishing over a flat, even like in Texas, you can swim it just like this, a steady retrieve. Don't want to go too fast like this, just a nice, slow, steady retrieve just like that. Sometimes you can add in a twitch of the rod every so often but you're just swimming it through the water column. So swimming it helps when you're fishing over a grass flat, when you're fishing in really shallow water. Uh, it helps when you know there's like an oyster bed that you're trying to not get hung up on. And you can also move your rod tip up and down. So if I'm trying to work my lure over top of rocks and keep my lure up higher in the water column, like for instance, I've got these rocks right here then I'll cast it out. And as soon as it hits the water, I'm going to keep my rod tip up. So see how my rod tip is pointed up just a little bit. Then I'm going to, that's how my lure is going to stay higher in the water column. Now let's say you're fishing deeper and you want to swim your lure deeper. Then all you're going to do is just point your rod tip down just like this. We're fishing really shallow. There's some grass right out here. So we'll probably pick up some grass, but for all intents and purposes, you guys get the idea. If you're fishing deeper, point your rod tip down. And again, you can also give some uh, twitches of the rod just to give your lure a little bit more action. So that right there is the technique for how to fish a jig. This is the most versatile, and in my opinion, one of the most effective lures for inshore saltwater fishing. Um, so you're just, again, you're just wanna be bouncing your jig off the bottom. And you really wanna make sure that you're not just bouncing it and not reeling down the slack to make sure that you're keeping contact with the bottom. So when you're popping your jig off the bottom and you're giving it that bouncing motion, you can give it the occasional hop, the larger hop like that. That's okay. Especially when I'm flounder fishing, I like to cast it out, let it hit the bottom, and then I'll give it like a subtle kind of bounce bounce, and then I'll give it like a larger hop like that. So just that bounce bounce. and you can always throw in a larger hop just like that. So hopefully that helps y'all out. Uh, this lure right here, in my opinion, is really like my favorite inshore saltwater fishing lure rig. Um, if y'all can catch fish off of this, then really you can catch any fish for inshore saltwater fishing. Uh, striped bass, this line's like all over my face. So you can catch striped bass, tarpon, uh, cobia, red drum, uh, flounder fishing. This is like the staple rig for flounder fishing. So there it is y'all. 
that is how to fish a jig everything that you need to know if y'all like this video please help us out please help out this channel give us a like and subscribe also we definitely want to hear from y'all so if y'all have any other tutorials or how to's that y'all want us to do or feature on then definitely drop us a line in the comment section below that's all i got y'all now it's time for y'all to get up off your butt catch yourself some fish peace out